This is Witchbase News for Friday the 22nd of March 2024 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week Canon Research achieve a huge logistical success lighting up the Guardians as Laygong is destroyed FDEV clarify their position with rewards 100 screenshots light up the community and are Achilles Aerospace working on a Thargoid hybrid drive that can defeat interdictions. You know how this bit goes please like, subscribe and ding that little bell so that YouTube shows you all our content and if you'd like to directly help our work here at the Burr Pit you can also support us through Patreon. Links to that and everything else are in the description below. A couple of weeks back we reported on the initiative inside Canon Research to activate all 30 of the known Guardian beacons all at the same time just to see what if anything happens. The project spearheaded by Commander Larzok became known as Project Guardian Lighthouse. Herding 30 commanders to all perform the same action in game all at the same time in different parts of the galaxy is no mean feat but I'm very pleased to report that on March the 16th all 30 of the Guardian beacons were indeed lit by the Guardian Lighthouse project and that, as was perhaps expected, there was no discernible unusual effect on the galaxy. I say I'm very pleased to report not because the reporting gives me any particular joy but rather because I can report it as Canon fortunately didn't destroy the universe when they did it. If you're interested in reading more on Project Guardian Lighthouse then Commander Sovereign Winter has published an excellent write up of the experiment which includes multiple eyewitness testimonies and videos. You'll find that linked in the description below. Very well done everyone involved I think. As we reported during the week the Titan Lei Gong exploded last week after the caustic cauliflowers carelessly left the gas on coincidentally after the huge alien mothership was attacked by commanders from across the community using anti-Titan Guardian nanite torpedoes. As you may be aware already there are some special rewards available for participation in the attack on the Thargoid Titans namely arcs, paint jobs, ship kits and decals. Frontier reported this week that whilst they have made progress in nailing down the issues that some commanders experienced when attacking Taranis, those problems did still manifest for some players during the attack on Lei Gong and so they have again agreed to grant the participation paint jobs, ship kits and decals to anyone who was in the HIP8887 system with Lei Gong in the 7 days running up to its destruction regardless of how much damage they may have done to the Titans hearts prior to the aforementioned unfortunate and entirely coincidental gas incident. You'll find Frontiers post on the issue linked below this video. Lave Radio co-host, YouTuber, buckyballer and serial SRV shenanigan engineer Commander Alec Turner produced a video last week that very simply featured 100 of his personal favourite screenshots from the game in a musical montage. So elegant and effective was the idea, 100 screenshots, that it was almost immediately picked up by other members of the community who echoed what Alec had started and produced videos of their own and thus 100 screenshots videos became a thing. Every video we could find in the trend that's 11 as at the time of recording we've listed in the description below this one. As you can imagine each one is completely unique in its musical choice and presentation style but the videos themselves also serve to beautifully demonstrate just how different and unique every players journey through Elite Dangerous is. Following the destruction of the Titan Taranis around 3 weeks ago the remains of the shattered monster mothership were surrounded by an impenetrable caustic cloud. As we reported last week that cloud had begun to dissipate somewhat making the centre accessible albeit still with some caustic damage. But that was manageable with liberal use of the now easily obtainable caustic sink launcher. Fast forward to Tharg's Day's tick this week and the caustic cloud has now dissipated even further making the cloud around what remains of Taranis a significant degree less dense and likewise the caustic damage less severe. 
The Taranis debris is, as you might perhaps imagine, absolutely awash with materials and commodities that can be scooped up and collected and, with the thinning of the cloud this week, there also arrived a fascinating community goal to take advantage of at least part of that salvage opportunity. The CG is fascinating not for its implementation and rewards although those are of interest but for the very reason being given in law for the community goal. The goal is asking commanders to take a trip into the Taranis debris and, whilst in there, find and recover one of the rarer finds in the cloud, that being Titan Drive components. For just participating in the goal and handing in one Titan Drive component there are handsome cash rewards and no less than 3 separate paint jobs. One each for the Challenger, Chieftain and Crusader which is great but as I mentioned it's perhaps the reason for the community goals appearance that has caused it to ping our radar in particular. The sponsor for the community goal is the Achilles Corporation, a company in Elite Dangerous lore better known for their robotics division as they manufacture stingers and skimmers that can be seen patrolling surface POIs and installations. They are however also the manufacturer of the frameshift drive interdictor module that is used to interrupt ships in supercruise, dropping them back into normal space usually for the purposes of a casual chat, an exchange of ideas or a random act of appalling unprovoked violence. The reason the Achilles Aerospace Division is asking to get a look at Titan Drive technology is, in their words, they intend to bring space travel into a new age. For anyone that wasn't around or missed it in game, when the Titans arrived in human space they didn't just pop into existence one day. They were visible in game for months as incredibly luminous very fast moving spiral like structures that became known in the community as Stargoids and when I say fast moving they travelled from a region somewhere in the area of Barnard's Loop to the bubble without the use of hyperspace jumps. That's around 1700 light years in something roughly akin to supercruise. Of course that technology is far less efficient time wise for such distances than the current hyperspace conduits all ships use and would make no sense for humans to use but the speeds involved are staggering nonetheless and it would, in fact, absolutely leave supercruise in its dust if it were used within a star system. The question then becomes if this thing is developed where would it be used? Despite its original intent being to move a capital ship around I personally find it difficult to see a solid gameplay advantage from FDEV's point of view to strapping this thing to a fleet carrier and using it there. Frontier have hinted on a couple of occasions now that the incoming Python Mark II as well as being a contender in the PvP arena also has a new feature that they are not yet ready to discuss. FDEV has stated that they are giving players more of a reason to engage in PvP with the launch of the revamped power play later this year. There will be a whole swathe of the community that wants to experience the new power play but is perhaps nervous of entering the PvP arena, particularly with the current system of supercruise interdiction. Could it then be possible that a new technological development could be in the works that would make commanders highly visible in supercruise but also extremely vast and difficult if not impossible to interdict. This could potentially make the only part of a journey that is vulnerable to PvP the very end zone when you're making a dash in normal space toward your objective starport. True station blockades would become possible but so would participation in open power play for the less PvP capable commander. Time will tell but such a system, if balanced correctly, could potentially give the power players and the PvPers at the very least the meaningful gameplay they've been craving. The community goal is running for 2 weeks until the 4th of April. Will you be producing your own 100 screenshots video? Do you think Achilles Aerospace could be developing a hypercruise drive to defeat interdictions? And if not where do you think their research into Titan drives could or should be going? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.